Now, how young is too young to enjoy a drink or two with friends? The president of the Australian Medical Association says the legal age limit should be increased to 25. Dr Steve Hambleton is the man who has made that controversial claim and he joins us now from Brisbane. Thanks very much for your time this morning. Why do you want to see the legal drinking age lifted to 25? Well, I think it's time to have a conversation about the facts. Yesterday, the AMA held a summit in Canberra where we brought together a lot of experts. We had the police, we had uh, researchers, we had people who know about brain development. And it turns out that uh, brain development in humans doesn't actually stop until your mid-20s, until you're about 25. So when we're thinking about drinking, when, we're thinking, when, when regulators are thinking about the age limit, when parents indeed are thinking about uh, their children, and when 18-year-olds are thinking about taking that drink, they need to be aware that uh, young brains are more susceptible to alcohol. They're less likely to actually tell you, uh, give you clues that you should stop drinking. So these things are very important and they can permanently impair your learning ability. So if we're talking about the facts, let's talk about the facts. What kind of support do you think there is out there in the community to lift the drinking age to 25? Look, really we don't think it'll ever get to 25, but we do want people to consider the realities. We don't want young people to go out with the expressed intention of drinking to unsafe levels. And those unsafe levels we see the results of all over the country. So there's got to be an attitudinal change to alcohol. We've got to help our young people make those good decisions. We've got to help parents help those young people make those decisions and regulators have got a role as well. And that's some of the comments that we've been receiving. We've been asking for viewer comments on this this morning. And, you know, Tony says instead of adding new legislation, the existing legislation should be properly and efficiently prosecuted. And he's talking about uh, the onus of liquor supply on licensees and their employees, because uh, surely individuals would find uh, another way to access alcohol if they didn't do it in pubs or clubs. Look, I think that's a very insightful comment and there are lots of rules out there that aren't being enforced properly. Uh, there, are, it's, there are things happening that are making it difficult to enforce. I mean, alcohol uh, service should not be served to someone who's already intoxicated. If you, if you add a, a caffeinated energy drink to alcohol, it's much harder for people behind the bar to make that decision. And we, and we need to make sure that uh, we support pubs and clubs to do the right thing right now. You know, we, we do have a rule against underage drinking. We need to enforce that better. We actually need to have a culture that encourages people uh, to say no and to be able to say no and to be congratulated for doing so. Um, are you satisfied with the alcohol restrictions that have been put in place in certain areas like in Kings Cross? Do they help reduce alcohol related violence? Look, there are very many things that can change that and uh, we do need to think about those restrictions. Uh, uh, King's Cross has been uh, the, 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 well, the target for some terrible activities of, of late. We've seen the same thing in Newcastle. We've had, we heard some reports from the Northern Territory yesterday at our summit and also from Perth. We do need to make sure we think about you know, people moving between pubs and clubs at, th at the time of night, the opening hours, the sorts of drinks that are available. Uh, and the police presence on those streets. But we do not want to put our young female and male police persons at risk from people who are intoxicated and drinking way too much. I mean, it's not fair on our police services to use those, use those skills in those ways. What about the calls from some that uh, energy drinks mixed with alcohol should be banned in pubs and clubs and in fact those uh, pre-mixed uh, energy drinks and alcohol shouldn't be sold by liquor stores? Well, I think that's a very important point as well. Another very important point where there is evidence. And the evidence says that there's actually no benefit to adding, adding a caffeinated energy drink to alcohol. In fact, there's harm. So why are they available at all? Why, are we, why have we got energy drinks on tap in pubs? They simply don't allow the person who is, if you like, an experienced drinker to understand how intoxicated they are. That signal that says, I should stop, is delayed and decreased. So do you, want to, they, see, they do you in, want to see those energy drinks banned from pubs and clubs? Well, caffeinated energy drinks pre-mixed with alcohol should be banned. Uh, we also should question whether we should have uh, uh, caffeinated um, energy drinks on tap. Why are they on tap in pubs and clubs? Perhaps that should be banned as well. Steve Hambleton, we thank you very much for your time this morning.